Hey everybody and welcome to another work in progress video. Uh, today I'm going to be working on the Luminarch of Heish. And that is the sort of B-side of this particular kit. And I forget what the other version of it is called, but uh, this is the one with a weird sort of telescopy, microscopy thing on it instead of the big planety thing on the top. So um, this turns out to be a lot more complex a uh, project than I sort of expected it to be. Uh, as you can see, there's a lot of little fine details to it. There's a couple of figures. I kind of only thought there was one, but there's actually two. Uh, and you really have to do a lot of little uh, assemblies, little sub-assemblies, you know, including the, the miniatures, of course. Uh, this is not something you can build and then paint because it has an actual interior. Uh, but we'll get to that. For right now, I think I'm going to start with the, uh, the the little optics at the top. And in order to do that, I'm just going to go ahead and stick everything to uh, some um, bottles. I have a whole bunch of different things that I, I put blue tack on in order to hold models. Could be old paint bottles, could be mixing cups, could be uh, spools, what have you. Um, and it's all just going to get stuck onto stuff so that it can be painted. Uh, for now, I'm going to go ahead and um, get everything stuck in and go ahead and just prime on some black primer. Um, nothing, no, no real secrets here. I'm using my standard um, Badger, what do they call that, Steinal Res, um, which I have to mention every time I, I say Steinal Res that I really don't like that name. <laughs> but anyway, not, not much special going on here. Just a, a nice light coat of black primer. Okay, with the uh, black primer out of the way, I'm just going to go ahead and use some uh, black metallic from War Colors uh, to start my silvers. Um, the black metallic is actually a really cool color. I like it a lot, but it also works as a good uh, base for lighter metallics. And I'm going to do something I don't do a lot normally except with metallics and that is uh, a dry brush a nice generous dry brush with a nice heavy brush i think that is actually the p3 uh, large dry brush that doubles as a uh, an airbrush cleaner <laughs> it does dual purpose so uh, yeah this is just going to be a liberal liberal dry brush uh, when i do dry brushing uh, for metallics the the real trick here is to make sure that they're real dry to work them up a little at a time uh, the large brush really helps to almost kind of burnish uh, the paint after it, it goes on so that you get a nice kind of shiny metallic finish and uh, other than that no real secrets to this it is just dry brushing so uh yeah, but this is just the first step, and then we'll move on to another color. So the next color is uh, War Colors Metallic Pewter. And the Metallic Pewter is very, very similar to um, Bolt Gun Metal. Uh, I think it has a little bit more color to it, a little, well, I should not a little more color, I guess uh, they both have color to them, but uh, um, it's got a little different color to it than the Bolt Gun Metal, but in terms of overall tone, very very similar and uh, so again just another dry brush over the black metallic to build up the brightness At this point, I should point out that um, I, I had decided to go ahead and do the horses barding uh, using the same colors. So again, starting with the black metallic and then mu moving up to the pewter and then uh, from there going up to metallic silver. So this will be the final color 
in our metallics, although a little later on I will go in uh, with a brush and actually add some uh, straight brushed in highlighting to uh, kind of finalize that finalize that metallic but here you can see it uh, on the um, the largest of the optic pieces I almost wish that I was doing the the optics in a metallic I think they, they might look good that way I gotta say that I really, really liked the way that the uh, horse armor or barding came out. I think the overall tone is, is maybe darker than I wanted, e even with the application of the silver. I think the, um, if I wanted it to be brighter, I probably should have started with silver, maybe airbrushing that color in and then washed it down and then built it back up again. Uh, when you start with black and then try to go to light it sometimes just stays dark and that is the case here but on the other hand really like the effect all right time to start doing the lenses uh, and you can see I've already gotten started on the section of four pieces that are all connected using a little war colors one coat yellow uh, although the uh, the term one coat on there might be a little bit of a misnomer, it does cover really well for a yellow. Um, but one coat, maybe not so much. You can see here that um, it does a really good job of co covering for a yellow, but um, it's not going to cover it all immediately. It is going to take several coats to get it fully coated. On the other hand, I will be covering this completely with yellow without having to move um, upward from darker colors to get up to a bright yellow. So, you know, that's a win there. And with the yellow completed, um, at this point I'm going to give it a wash of Cassandra Yellow Shade. And that's going to provide a really nice richness to that yellow and sort of saturate it, both literally and figuratively, um, and just make it a little less electric yellow. But this isn't the final step either. Um, the the shade isn't going to be on a smooth surface like this. Isn't going to be as even as I might like. So when this is done, we're going to hit this with the airbrush a bit. Um, but more on that momentarily. All right, so as you can see, the uh, the yellow wash has left the lenses a little splotchy. So I'm going to go ahead and um, put another coat of uh, the original base yellow in the central portion. And again, since all, although this is the one coat yellow, it's not it doesn't uh, perfectly cover in one coat it is going to leave some of that other color showing through, which is good. It's what I want. Uh, the, the shade, as you can see, also has that really nice kind of uh, dark ring around the outside. And again, that's what I was hoping for. And what you end up there is really something that looks like the sun, which I like. Um, but I did mention we were going to do some airbrushing, and that's going to come along very shortly. Uh, 
All right, so with the uh, yellow out of the way, I'm moving to yellow. <laughs> Specifically, this is the yellow one from War Colors. Now, this is, of course, going to be a, a more transparent paint, but it looks like white, right? It does look very, very... Um, if you didn't know it wasn't pure white, you would think it was. And uh, so what I'm doing is I'm really just sort of carefully dusting it into the center. And that'll give the thing an overall... Um, sort of white, white brightness that I wanted. And we're going to do that on each of the lenses and sort of on the ones that are the cluster of four in the very front. Um, I'm, I'm airbrushing where I can, but with those, you kind of have to hit them from a couple of different angles. All right, so uh, here are the is the assembled uh, laser gun thing. <laughs> Whatever the hell this weapon is called, uh, I really like the kind of sun fiery sun look to the whole thing. Very very happy with it. Uh, as you can see, I kind of got started on the uh, little balls in the back there with a little purple base. Um, that's part of the sort of the beta color before they finalize them. And now I'm going to outline some stuff in purple one and. The, the balls in the picture have a kind of like, I don't know, an electrical look, like there's electricity coursing over the top of them or something. So the idea here is that I use the purple base to start with. Uh, I'm going to outline or line in the uh, kind of electrical bits, the brightest electrical bits with the purple one, which again, when you look at it, kind of looks like white, but it's not. And then I'm going to go in after that with another one of the purple colors, uh, a dark purple, and kind of fill it in between the, the medium and the light. And it's going to get a kind of neat glowy effect that I'm looking for. There, there you can see, I think that is purple four. Pretty sure that's it. There's one, one step darker than that. And essentially I'm leaving uh, a little line between, uh, a line of the mid color between the dark and the light. And that sort of provides this little transition piece. And because this is supposed to be kind of arcing electricity, I'm, I'm not. I'm definitely not trying to blend it. I, I, I want there to be kind of a hard line, but I've also made those uh, the light lines a little fuzzy with the brush. You know, not trying very hard to make them super hard lines. So when that's all done, I should hopefully have the effect that I'm looking for. And there it is. Uh, you know, there's a few other little odds and ends that got done, like the little gold pieces, little gold flourishes. Um, but all the little purple balls are done. The lenses are all done. All the metallic silver is done. So this bit is ready to go. And I think that's where I'm going to end it for this video. Uh, there's going to be at least one more, possibly two more videos in this series, because this piece... A lot more complex than I expected it to be. But anyway, thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.